Greetings all, The Devious Monkey here. Today, I want to talk about physical health. More importantly, or more to the point, I want to talk about weight, body image, things like that. Why? Well, because today it was over 75 degrees and I decided to wear shorts and I had to stuff my fat ass into those shorts that I haven't worn for a while and it was pretty upsetting to say the least. Now, here's the thing. I judge myself based on a ridiculous past that isn't really easy to maintain given that I'm not in that situation anymore. Now, I have mentioned before that I was a deep sea diver for the Navy. Basically, I felt like I was paid to be in superhuman condition. What do I mean? Well, I mean, I was an Iron Man. I had like three to six percent body fat. I ran six to 15 miles a day. I swam a lot of times up to a mile, maybe more a day. And I rode my bike anywhere from 10 to 50 miles a day. All I did was physical exercise. It's what I love to do. That was back when I actually liked to run because I hated to run, but then I started to love it. And I used to ride my bike to and from the base and I would run in between and I would swim and I would do all this stuff. I was really in superhuman condition and I didn't have any body fat and it's what I hold myself to now, but that was 25 years ago. Shit doesn't work that way anymore. But in my head, I still hold myself to that ideal. So when I look at myself, like, I, you know, I guess you could call it I'm body dysmorphic because I judge myself based on then. And then things worked a lot differently than they do now. But I still don't buy it. And I still look at myself and think, oh, God, I'm such a fat ass. And I'm not, per se, probably. And most people will look at me and be like, dude, what's wrong with you? You're not fat at all. And I'm like, I hide it well. I just wanted to give an explanation of where I was and how I hold myself to that ideal still to this day. And I don't know that it's physically possible for me to ever be in that kind of condition again, given my lot in life now. Back then, again, I was a deep sea diver. I felt I was paid to be in that kind of condition. All of my friends were deep sea divers. All of us did shit like that all the time. We were all in unbelievable condition. And when you're surrounded by 30, 40 guys that are all like that, you know, you sort of just, you're like that. That's the way it is. Now, I don't hang out with anybody. You know, with pandemic shutdown, a lot of things changed. Now that's not an excuse, I'm just, bear with me. At one point, I had gotten to a ridiculous weight for myself and it just, it happened. And it just, over, over the course of a, a good bit of time, I just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. In hindsight, I didn't realize it was because of an unbelievable amount of stress. Just the way that I was conducting my lifestyle and I was gorge eating and not taking care of myself. I wasn't exercising and I wasn't de-stressing correctly. I was burying my stress emotions in food, a lot of food. <laughs> and I was, I was huge. Now this isn't a dig against my sister, but I flew home for like a couple of days to surprise my dad on his birthday. And she came to the airport and picked me up. And the first thing she said when she looked at me was like, damn, you got fat. And I was like, but she was absolutely right. I did get fat. I was huge. And I'm not just, I was huge. We're talking 60 pounds heavier than I was when I was a deep sea diver at my peak. And again, that happened over a period of time until one day I was just sitting there looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, what the hell did you do? Like, how did you let yourself get to this point? And I had had enough. I had enough and I'd been talking about it and I'm like, oh man, I'm getting, you know, my gut, you know, oh man, these pants are tight. I gotta like, get, I have to go get them let out and all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, I buried my head in the sand to it until I couldn't hide any longer. And I was like, okay, we're done now. I can't do that. So I set up different goals and I had what I called my realistic weight that I wanted to get to, and then I had my unrealistic weight that I wanted to get to. I remember when I got to my realistic weight, and then some. In fact, I had gone down, and I guess I'll just say the weight. I was at 175 pounds, so I had lost 35 pounds. I was 210 at my heaviest. So I went from 210 to 175, and that was my realistic goal 
Now keep in mind, when I was a deep sea diver, I was 147 pounds. Okay, if that gives you any indication of the, of the difference on how things shifted. So I was at 175. I kept going because I felt good. I looked good to myself for the first time in a long time. And I ended up taking it down to 169 pounds. And I couldn't believe it because I thought when I hit 175, like that five pounds going down to 170, that was tough. That was tough to get to that point. It's because I'm a creature of instant gratification. You know, the joke like, I went to the gym once, I ate a handful of carrots, how come I'm not thin? That's kind of how I was going, you know, because when you get to be a certain age, it's so difficult to lose weight or even to maintain weight. And you say, oh man, all I gotta do is look at a bag of chips and I gain five pounds. That shit's true. <laughs> I mean, I can destroy things over a weekend and any gains that I have, I have accomplished over the week, I can destroy in one weekend. And it's so disheartening which is why you have to convict to it that much harder. So anyways, so I went from 210 to 175, and then when I hit 169, I was just elated. I couldn't believe that I got there, and I thought, okay, well, my unrealistic goal of 165 is right there. I, I think I can do this now. I actually thought I could do it. Pandemic shutdown. Now I was home, and I was able to eat anytime I wanted to. It wasn't like when I was on the road and I would get up in the morning and I wasn't eating breakfast. I was going to Starbucks and I was having, you know, a big fatty latte. And then I probably would skip lunch most of the time and then I would gorge dinner and that's what got me to the point of 210. Well, then I started eating better and eating probably more frequently and all that. And it got to the point where, you know, I had, I had gotten down. The big thing was that I started exercising like crazy. And by exercising, I mean walking. I just, I did a ton of walking. Now I always do little things to try to get more steps in and I've always done this. So when I park in a parking lot, I don't take the spot closest to where I'm going. I'm all the way at the end of the parking lot and I always walk far away, kind of drives my wife nuts. But I always park farther away from where I am so that I have to walk. So if I go grocery shopping, I don't park at the Trader Joe's. I park way at the end by the Petco so that I have to walk past like six stores across the parking lot to get to the Trader Joe's. Little things like that. I constantly run up and down the stairs here. If I need something and I can get it up here, I'll still go downstairs to get it just so that I have to take more steps. So things like that were adding up. They all added up and that's how I got to the 169. I never got to the 165. I didn't get it. After I hit 169, I basically gained back, and we'll say in between 10 and 15 pounds, because right now I'm hovering in between 180 and 185. And I've been going back and forth in that five pounds for the past year. And I realize that it's because I am home and I can eat whenever I want to. Now, I'm not a big snacker, but I'm eating a pretty big breakfast, a pretty big lunch, a pretty big dinner, and then I don't snack at all for the rest of the night. So after I eat dinner, when I'm done editing this, I won't eat again tonight. So I've, I've at least accomplished that. So I'm not, I'm not ballooning up, but I'm not going back down. Well, after I stuffed myself into these shorts today and I realized how painful it is, and I made myself keep them on all day to, to punish myself into thinking, you gotta stop. I now realize that while I'm not horrible, I'm not making smart choices and I eat way too many potato chips and sometimes I get too much soda, too many Cokes when I, when I go out and all that kind of stuff, a little bit too much sugar and at the point where I had gotten down to 169, I pretty much stopped all sugar intake. There isn't anything that I ate that had sugar in it and obviously that made the difference. So really what I wanna talk about now is just putting this out in, into the public eye so that I'm held accountable and that I've had enough. I, I'm not happy with, with how much I've got hanging around the old midsection, so I am now going to commit to going back down. I am going to do this in stages. Right now, I'm going back to that realistic goal of 175, which means I'm gonna to have to lose, I'm gonna say in between five and 10 pounds. Now my goal for that is to do that by the time it's my wife's birthday. If this isn't, I'm not gonna starve myself. I could literally starve myself and you know, what was the supermodel diet that I always talk about, um, diet Coke and apples. <laughs> I could eat Diet Coke and apples and probably start smoking clove cigarettes again, and I could probably do that in less than a month, but I don't want to be unhealthy about it. So I'm giving myself from now, which is, what's today? March 12th to May 15th-ish, right around there. Not exactly on my wife's birthday, but right at the middle of May. 
that's what I'm giving myself to get down to that 175. Then I'm gonna shoot for that unrealistic weight goal of 165. And I wanna do that by August 1st. And I think that that's attainable. Now, what I did last year was that I started walking all the time. And I was up to walking two, at least twice a day. Cause I would get up in the morning, I would make like a cleansing juice type drink in the morning. And then I would go walk for one to three miles. And then I would do it again at night after dinner. So I would at least do that. And then a lot of times in between there, I was going you know, to the boardwalk and walking the boardwalk and stuff like that. So I was trying to do all this stuff and I'm trying to be sensible about it. I also have to realize that I'm broken and with the angry spine and all that kind of stuff, I, I'm not gonna be out there doing parkour. I'm not going to a gym. I'm not weight lifting weights and doing all kinds of that shit. I never liked it before and I still don't. I'm gonna be walking. I'm gonna be doing a lot of hiking, a lot of photo hikes, filming hikes and things like that. And I just need to get more active. So this week I've been doing that. I've been walking every day and I feel a hell of a lot better despite the fact that I'm stuffed into these shorts. So that's what I really wanted to talk about today. What kind of challenges are you having? What kind of excuses are you making for yourself? Are you a, an ostrich with your head in the sand denying the fact that you need to work on your physical health? And I'm not just talking about weight. I'm talking about being physically healthy. There's a lot more involved than just having, you know, some extra around the midsection. You know, I, when I was doing all this stuff and when I was down that weight, I actually felt a hell of a lot better. A lot more energy, I was a lot happier, and, and my spine didn't hurt as much. Because when you get to be my age, five pounds makes a huge difference. And you feel that in your knees and in your ankle and in your hips and in your spine and so on and so forth. So if I can knock this 15 pounds that I gained back away at least, then I'll be a hell of a lot better off. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what kind of challenges you're having and what you're gonna do. And uh, let's get healthy together, all right? That's all I got for you today. I'm gonna go eat now. And I'm not gonna eat like a bag of chips. So, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.